Good Friday morning. This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. We are looking at, uh, this is a, uh, I think it's a 2001 Mercury Mountaineer, uh, five liter Ford block. This will be the foundation of the 311, uh, small block Ford dyno mule that I've kind of had a few, uh, videos about so far. Um, I have assembled a set of 185 cc AFR heads and uh, got some aluminum rods for this engine and the block is finally machined, bored and honed and line honed and um, a few other things have been done to it. Um, first of all, before we get in too far of this, I just want to thank um, my viewers and um, I think when uh, YouTube does the demographics, most of my viewers are of like the late 40s, 50s and 60s age, which kind of makes sense because I do a lot of Ford engines from the 60s and 70s and that's when, um, that's how old most of you would be if, uh, if you were interested in uh, those types of engines, the FEs and the Clevelands and the small blocks and that sort of thing. And um, um, I can really tell um, who comments uh, by, <laughs> by your age and by your demographics. And uh, for the most part, the comments are really nice. And, and I can tell that, uh, you know, the comments are from that demographic, that age group, the 40s, 50s, and 60s, because your comments are really orderly and, and mannerly and upbeat, and I appreciate those. I can also tell um, when the younger generation pops in. Um, those are the ones who don't have uh, enough patience to, to flow through a video and um, they just don't have the manners and they're really snapping off. Um, either that or they're either of the younger group or they're just really having a bad day. And I noticed that um, one of the viewers commented this morning on the tunnel port video. Uh, they were all upset because I wasted their time. I went through an entire video and didn't show uh, a dyno pull. But if they had just watched the entire video, they would have seen the dyno pull. But, um, you know, it, I'm sorry I wasted your time that you, you were not worthy enough to, uh, uh, to watch the entire video and, and see what you were ranting about. But, you know, thank you for my good viewers. I, I appreciate all of you all. And, uh, you know, the channel may never grow. And, and that's fine with me because I don't do you know, Chevrolet stuff and, you know, I don't appeal to the LS crowd and all that stuff. So, you know what, if we just reach 2,700 or 3,000 subscribers, that's fine with me. I, I know I'm in a, in a kind of a, a niche market and, and that's cool, but I, I'm very thankful for, uh, for my viewers and especially for you guys who, um, who are, who know how to act on on the internet thank you very much but um let's get back sorry i'll step off my soapbox and uh let's get back to uh, the nitty-gritty here this is a, a five liter block um these are normally pretty uh, i wouldn't say weak uh, it depends on the block um I, i've built a lot of these with 347s and the later model <laughs> five liter stuff that, you know, around the 550 horsepower mark and they seem to last. And then I've seen guys post, um, builds with, you know, 400, 450 horsepower and the blocks are literally split right down the middle. And that tends to be a failure mode for, uh, for these later model five liter blocks. They just split in between the mains and the cam and they just keep on going until you have two halves. So, uh, this is, uh, my dyno mule, 311 cubic inches, and we're going to be, uh, turning some RPM and making some horsepower, hopefully. And so I've tried to do a few things to counteract, uh, those harmonics that typically will split 
a block and a half. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but this is uh, this block has been filled up to the bottom of the water pump holes. So if I try to stick my finger in here, that's as far as she's going to go. Um, there you can start to see it right there. But uh, uh, filling the block gives you stability and increases the rigidity of the block. It stabilizes the material behind the cylinder walls, which increases the ring seal. And uh, overall, it's a good thing. It does make the box a little bit heavier. And uh, although it doesn't increase your water temperature, sometimes on street, you will see your oil temperature go up. So when we use blocks like this, I typically advise my customers to run an oil, oil cooler to help with that. But uh, we're at a 4060 bore, uh, an 8190 deck height. The, um, the drains in the lifter valley have been tapped for a quarter inch pipe, so I can put some stand pipes in here. Um, I'm in the midst right now of uh, drilling this channel that runs down and intersects the main uh, gallery in between here uh, to uh, employ a, a lifter restrictor. So I just need to tap that hole, but um, still got a little bit to do on it. Uh, cam bearings need to go in and uh, the crank isn't balanced yet. So um, I haven't done a lot of uh, bearing clearance checking, but uh, from the past videos, here is the cylinder heads. These are AFR 185s. You can watch the other video and see what uh, I have um, packed, uh, what goodies I've packed these with. This is the second time that, it, that they have been cut. Um, before, uh, when I was assembling them the past, in the past, um, one fell against the other and put a little divot. Um, you can see, you can see this little divot right here. There was another one up here that we machined out, but when the head fell against this one, um, it hit right about here, and it just perfectly landed up or lined up with the fire ring on the head gasket. So I thought, this is my luck that, uh, you know, I'll get these together and, you know, I'll torch a head gasket or something because of it. So it got to me and I just went ahead and stripped them down and uh, ended up, we had to take another four thousandths off and we still have this little guy right here, but he's not going to hurt anything because he's way inboard of the, uh, of the fire ring. So Second time these heads have been cut, now they're at 54.4 cc's and they are reassembled, they're ready to go. Um, here's the connecting rods that we're gonna be using. And uh, these are uh, five 700 length with a small block Ford rod journal. And here are the pistons that we're gonna be using. These are custom race tech pistons and these have been around my shop for a very long time. Um, they kind of been bounced from project to project and that's why I'm doing another dyno mule is it because I finally accumulated enough parts laying around that I could almost put an engine together with. So we will go that route. Um, so if you notice, this is what's left of a dome. And I think these pistons, uh, I think we had the domes cut off. Um, a couple years ago. Like I said, this stuff has been laying around for a long time. But um, what we're going to do today is, uh, since the block isn't totally prepped and, and ready to go, I want to know where my compression ratio is going to lay with, with these cylinder heads and with the block and um, with these pistons. But the thing is, I don't know what the volume is on the pistons since the dome has been cut and since they have these adequate valve reliefs. So I'm gonna show you how to CC a piston. And um, what that entails is putting it in the block and uh, doing a little bit of math and pouring it like you would do a combustion chamber. So we're gonna get set up and we're gonna do that now. And uh, hopefully uh, the results I get from this measurement and this measurement, I can get an accurate uh, compression ratio 
And, um, you know, I'm not really concerned about how far the piston is in the hole or out of the hole right now. We can adjust that with a head gasket. But uh, I want to know what these pistons are. Okay, so <clears throat> to start the process of CCing your piston, um, most of the time you can't just pour the valve reliefs and, and get an estimate. Uh, it just wouldn't be accurate. So what you have to do is that you have to put it uh, in the bore, in the cylinder bore, in the block, and do a little math. And, and I'm getting ready to draw something out for you, and we'll see if it makes sense. All right, got my handy dandy pen out here. I'm not an artist, but um, so here's what we're gonna do. Um, we have a cylinder, and I'm gonna put, this is the cross section, looking into the side of it, if the block was cut away. I'm going to put my piston in the bore. Again, very crude drawing because I can't draw. Uh, I'm going to measure this distance right here and I'm going to uh, set it all the way around so that it's the same distance all the way around. Um, then I'm going to do um, a volume calculation which is power squared times H and we know that our bore size is 4060, so we're going to have pi uh, radius squared, and then the height is going to be this x dimension, okay? So uh, when I get the piston in the bore and I get that x dimension and I fill out uh, this formula, then I should get a volume for this area or this particular volume right here okay above the piston that in theory that's what i should get in cc's or uh, cubic inches or whatever units we decide to use now say that um we're again looking at the cross section of of a cylinder and a piston what would happen if we had a big old dish in here okay so we would end up with this volume plus the volume in our dish, right? So I know that theoretically I should have V, but um, if I get something bigger than V, then I can do the math and I can subtract and I can figure out how big this dish is. In the same token, um, say that instead of a, a dish that I have a dome, Okay, so again, V would be a theoretical volume of, of this portion right here. If I get something smaller than that, then again, I can do the math and I can figure out how big my dome is. Okay, just by doing the math. Um, most people don't know that pistons are not perfectly round and they're not perfectly straight up and down. Uh, they are barrel faced. Um, they're the distance. If you measure the skirts, it's going to be bigger than if you measure the crown diameter. Okay. So pistons have a taper to them. That area above this top ring is called the crevice. Okay. And when we do, when we measure, um, piston volume down in the cylinder like that, then that takes into account your crevice volume and and everything that you normally wouldn't account for if you were doing a compression ratio calculation. So uh, I hope that made a little bit of sense. So what we're going to do, um, there's a couple of things that we have to do in order to do this. Um, I got to put some rings on the piston and hopefully that there's uh, not any gap on the rings. And um, I'm gonna grease the cylinder up really good so I can get a good seal. Um, I don't want any leakage when I use my uh, barrette. And um, um, we'll do the calculation and, and see what we come out with. 
All right, so first step, I've got my cylinder coated with a heavy grease. That'll help seal things up. Second step, I need to locate my 4060 uh, tapered ring compressor. I didn't loan it out. All right, you have to give me a minute. All right, so I'm glad I wasn't planning on putting this engine together today. Uh, I've lost my 4060 bore tapered ring compressor. I don't know if I loaned it out or what, but I was able to feed the ring in uh, with my fingernails. But uh, got it in here. Um, I've measured down uh, 250 thousandths, quarter inch, all the way around. And I checked that with uh, the depth part of my dial calipers. So the piston is sitting um, the same distance down in the bore all the way around. Now we can feed that number into our uh, formula. All right, so we're back to our handy dandy drawing. Uh, X is going to equal 250 thousandths. So we're going to have um, pi times 2030 squared times 250 thousandths. Uh, that's going to be our, our volume, theoretical volume. So let's do some math here. 2030 times 2030. If I had a better calculator, I could square it. That is uh, 4. 121 times 250 uh, times pi times 250 times 3.14159. Okay, so uh, that should be 3. Point Two, four, since all of our dimensions uh, were in inches, we have uh, cubic, I'm sorry, we have inches squared here and an inch dimension here, so that would be um, cubic inches. Okay? And one cubic inch. One cubic inch equals sixteen point three. 87 cc's okay cubic centimeters so if we take our 3.24 multiply by 16.387 then i should be able to pour this and if this area was completely flat on the piston just think of a completely flat piston then i should get 53 and just we won't even 53.03 is too small for me to measure so we'll say 53 cc's so i'm going to get my i'm going to grease this up just like i would a cylinder head i'm going to put my plate on it and then we're going to use our barrette and see what we measure okay so here's what we look like we got grease around got my plate on mashed it down to get a nice seal and we're going to load our barrette up all right, so we filled it up. I got a good seal. It's not leaking. And uh, I couldn't do it on camera. But um, we are at 56 and about 4.4.5. So we'll call it 56.5 cc's. And we are back to our handy dandy, dandy drawing. So theoretical, we should be at 53 cc's. We measure actual 56.5, okay? So what we did, we'll recap. If this area here was a completely flat piston and we just uh, filled this top portion full of fluid, we should get 53. But with our piston and with our crevice volume, and 
the valve reliefs and that little bit of a dome and everything on it, we got 56.5, okay? So we actually got just a little bit more volume than uh, if this piston were completely flat. So this piston volume, we can say is 3.5 cc's. And now when I do my calculation, I've measured my chamber, 54.4, I've got my piston volume, and um, like I said earlier, head gasket stuff, I can move around, and if my pistons are, um, they should be about uh, 10 in the hole uh, because of the aluminum rod that I'm gonna use, but after that rod heats up, then pistons should be at zero deck. So uh, we will calculate everything based on a zero deck um, and, and about a, about a 40 thousandths quench and we can calculate our compression ratio. All right, so I'm cleaned up now. Uh, it is a little bit messy to do that. Grease and uh, alcohol goes everywhere. But uh, I am, uh, after doing the calculation on the computer, I sit at 10 and a half to one compression. And it's actually 10.56. Uh, if, if everything was perfect with a 40 thousandths head gasket and a zero deck. So, I know that that will probably be uh, a little, you know, either way, I'll have to wait until I get the rotating assembly mocked up. But right now I got a really good idea of where I'm gonna be. I'd like to have a lot more compression, but I'm uh, too cheap to buy pistons. And so it is what it is. And uh, I think we can still make some power with 10 and a half to one compression. All right, guys, that is, uh, I'm gonna call it quits for today. Um, Probably tomorrow, I'll um, get the pistons hung on the rods, get everything washed up, and get our board clearances measured. I need to do that to verify um, that we have enough clearance for our block that has been poured. Um, my race tech rep recommended that I run one thousandth larger uh, or more piston the cylinder clearance than I normally would because the block is poured. So I'm gonna double check that. But uh, we should have um, pistons hung on rods and some measurements done for tomorrow. And um, I don't know if I'll do another video. If I don't, then I will see you next week. Uh, once again, thank you very much for hanging around and watching. And uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and um, hit that like button as well. Do you all have a good weekend? This is Brent, Like It's Motorsports, signing off.